Thank you very much and uh, good morning to everyone. I am actually quite surprised to see so many people here because I assumed that about two thirds of you would still be hung over in the hotels, upstairs, whatever. Um, so congratulations everyone that made it. And the people that filter in throughout the presentation, if everyone could just turn around, point and laugh at them, that'd be great. Um, so first of all, quick introduction. Um, and actually, before I go any further, this is huge. Last year, who was here last year? A quick raise of hands. Right, you remember the stage last year? It was kind of like there to there, and everyone was about to fall off. This is massive. I could run up and down here. Anyway, um, quick introductions. He says, there we go, that takes a while. Um, my name is Martin McDonald. I work for um, Ian, which is the Expedia affiliate network. I, I don't know if anyone's heard of it. I'll uh, go into exactly what it is and what we do in a second. If um, anyone ever wants to get in touch with me, the, the four things that you see there, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google+. That's also kind of the order of the amount of time that I spend in each one of them. So kind of try the top one first and work your way down. If you make it to Google+, and you haven't had a response, well, I've probably died or something. Um, the Facebook one's quite interesting, actually, because I'm facebook.com forward slash mogmartin. And I've kind of, I used to use that, that name about, up until about three to five years ago. Um, it was kind of tied into my past of working in gambling and poker SEO. Um, and there's a lot of bad shit around the internet which is tied to that mogmartin. So I've kind of stopped using it most places now. Um, but if you ever want to see some of the stuff that I used to do historically, Search around that keyword. Um, incidentally, I used to have twitter.com forward slash mogmartin, but they banned me despite the fact that I was a beta tester for them. But seriously, guys? I mean, that just wasn't fair. So for the people that remember my presentation last year, I've got one warning before we start. This is very much going to be a black hat free zone. I apologize. I genuinely do. I know you guys love it when we come up here and we talk that kind of shit that, you know, the stuff that you could do um, and not tell anyone about. That isn't what I'm going to be talking about today. I've kind of got a different, a different take on most of the speeches that I've done. Normally, I go through lots of actionable hints and tips and things that you can do about your site, ways of link building, ways of content production, things like that. Today, what I'm going to do is slightly different. I'm going to talk about a project that I've been working on for the last couple of months, something that we're doing internally at Expedia, Ian, um, and something that I think probably could add a lot of value to a lot of people in here, whether or not they work for an agency or they're in-house. There's, there's a ton of stuff that this tool can be used for. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I will be discussing how we can work together and make it all better. Um, so first of all, for those of us that don't know who MacGyver is, um, do, does anybody not know who MacGyver is? One, one, yes, <laughs> excellent. Had I, had I done this, and I, I was fully prepared for about 80% of the people to raise their hands, because I was kind of assuming that anyone under the age of about 35 probably didn't see him first time around. So to those younger people in the audience, he is that guy that Patty and Selma have got the, uh, got the crush on. But kind of the point in this is he was famous for getting out of scrapes and situations by building lots of interesting stuff out of not very much. Now, that's kind of what I've done in this little project, is built something that really should never have been done in Excel, because that was a really stupid thing to do. But I got so far down the path, I just thought, oh, screw it, I'm going to have to finish anyway, because I've put about two or three months into this now. So um, I've kind of MacGyvered together a way of indexing Google using two things, advanced web ranking from Cathion and Excel. Um, and it leads me to this question. Everyone knows what the mother of invention is, right? Anybody. Necessity. That? No. For most people, perhaps. In my case, total ineptitude. <laughs> I put this together in Excel basically because at the time I thought this would be the quickest and easiest way of doing it. I could have done it in PHP. I could have used different scrapers, but basically I was doing it as a proof of concept. So I used Excel because it was quick and easy, and I'm pretty much inept at most programming languages these days because I don't really do it enough anymore. Um, and the reason I put it together is because when I first started at Expedia, I was given a challenge. Now, I should probably explain exactly what it is that I do there. Um, I've got someone else from Expedia somewhere in the audience. Jeff Slipko, where are you? Hey, there he is. Um, so Jeff and I work together. And what we do is we help our partners, who are people like airlines or um, 
online travel agents, people like kayak.com, to improve their marketing. So we've kind of got a, say, like a mini advertising agency within Expedia, and we go out and we help our affiliates to improve their business, to do better, to drive more sales ultimately to Expedia. You know, it's, there is a little bit of selfishness in there at the end of the day. But everything that we do for them, we do for free. So either Jeff or myself goes into these airlines or online travel agents, looks at their strategies, works with them, tries to improve things. But the challenge that we had was putting a dollar value on the amount of help that we've given people. And it's really difficult. I mean, hey, even if you've got full access to Omniture, Google Analytics, whatever, still putting a dollar value down to the amount of help that you do in SEO is still difficult. Imagine how hard it is when they won't give you that data in the first place, yet we still have to define why what we do is important. So we had a challenge of trying to be able to demonstrate the uplift that we have given partners without any data from them whatsoever, which was a bit difficult. There are indexes of search results around on the internet. Um, search metrics is a really nice one. SEM rush. Yeah, not so much, but search metrics is really nice. Um, I, I'm, I've always been critical of SEM Rush, and I don't know why. I think it's just the color schemes. I'm, I'm really, sometimes I see things and I just take an instant dislike to them, and you know, it's probably very good, but I haven't used it in a while. The point is, other people do this, right? Search metrics was the one that I looked at initially to see if I could use that as our primary data set. And they've got 100 million keywords, and it's really good for looking at big sites and seeing how they've dropped. and. You know, it, it's good for doing initial market research if you're unfamiliar with the market. The problem is, though, 100 million keywords sounds a hell of a lot. And trust me, when you're trying to scrape that much stuff from Google, it really is a lot. But the problem is, for me in travel, I'm looking at affiliates who I know are generating large amounts of traffic, large amounts of revenue, and they don't even figure on search metrics. They're, they're just not there. That 100 million keywords is to cover the whole internet, and it's just not enough. If it was 50 billion keywords, we might be getting there. So what I needed to do was come up with something that would work much better for our industry. Now, you might be thinking, well, hang on a second, because there's these indexes as well. Now, just in case anybody is going to get the two things confused, those are not the same thing. Search metrics, SEM rush, and the one that I'm going to present to you in a second are indexes of Google results and how quickly they change. They are not indexes of links from website to another. Big important distinction there. We use APIs from most of those things in this project to be able to define why stuff is ranking where it is, but they're not the same thing. So we came up with a little project called SerpWatch. And basically what it does is it analyzes any updates, so we have Panda 3.9. This is the same kind of stuff that Dr. Poop was talking about yesterday. Um, but the, the kind of the difference is I'm going into much, much, much more depth here, and you can too for your industry so that you can work out all sorts of competitive intelligence, biz dev, all sorts of stuff. Um, having this kind of index for your industry allows you to see the strengths that your site or any other competitive site has got and focus in on why they're doing better than you or worse, whatever. Um, it efficiently allows us to look at any partner or anybody in the travel industry, and it could, that could apply to any of your industries as well. It helps us develop further clients. I mean, this, is, this does all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a great tool because the world fundamentally revolves around now, first, going to Google, doing a search, doing, then moving on to the thing that you want to do. People use it as their home page, even if you know that you're going to SEO Moz. I bet most people just type SEO Moz into the browser bar and then click on the result in Google, right? Most people do that. So that's a huge, huge information set, and we're not using it for business intelligence at this point in time, or certainly not enough. So that was one of the things. And the last item on that list is it allows us to own the data set for the industry, and we can then tell other people things about their sites that they weren't expecting, and that's quite a powerful thing. Um, so, my original thought was that we could use it for infographics. And I hate infographics, but you know, I've got to sell this internally somehow, and people like that buzzword. So, I put this together with the thinking that, you know, if I can tell you how much someone's site has gone up since they implemented something, or, you know, how powerful certain sites are within the industry for certain destinations of certain countries, I mean, there's a million different data points that we can use for infographics, and all of them are covered in this. Um, finding out information about your competitors, 
This is an awesome tool for that. But on top of that, if you work in an industry where, for instance, from our perspective, we've got, using this tool, we've got lists of every major travel site in every country of the world. And if these people aren't currently partners of ours, we can use that as a biz dev list. You can use this to look at competitors. You can use this to look at people within your industry that are selling the same products as you and look at how they're doing keyword-wise. There's tons and tons and tons of business information that we're ignoring because scraping Google to this kind of volume is something that historically has been quite hard to do. And the most important thing, I think, for me is it allows us to position ourselves pretty much as the authority within the travel market. I can see someone from Skyscanner down here. They're a great site in the travel market, looking and smiling. Um, because I can use this to tell you what your rankings have been historically for most of the keywords in the industry. I bet you anything I could tell you what your rankings are for more keywords than you could. We'll do that afterwards. Um, so how does it work? In essence, it's really, really, really simple because I just MacGyvered the whole thing together. All it is is I'm using advanced web ranking. How, how many people in here use that as their primary rank checking tool? Not many. You should. It's brilliant. Um, I've been using it forever. It is my favorite of all the rank checking tools. And fundamentally, if you want to use this spreadsheet, which I'll release at the end of the presentation, you need that. So. Uh, I'm not on an affiliate commission, but the owner of the company is sat over there somewhere, so he's buying me beers tonight. Um, so what it does is it just gives us these raw, unformatted lists here. So what I've got is the keyword, the search engine, the position it was in, and then the landing page. And then what we're doing is we've got lots and lots of different VBA macros. See, the beauty of this was no, actually no coding was done in any of this project. All of this was just recording a macro of me doing stuff and then reapplying it over and over again. Not one single line of code was written in building this whole index. So what this does is it gives us, and this is how simple it is, it gives us the keyword, the position, the landing URL. And all we want to do initially is just analyze what the differences are day by day for each one of these. So concatenate. Richard was talking about this a lot yesterday. Um, concatenate the keyword along with the landing page and then do a VLOOKUP every day based on the previous day's data and then take all of the differences in that and drop it into a separate table and keep it. Excel is nowhere near big enough to start doing 50,000. I'm scraping a large amount of data with this. I'm actually scraping for one of my data sets uh, 25,000 keywords times the top 50 results. So that's 425,000 Google result pages every 24 hours. And that's one of them I'm running. I'm running about six at the moment. So this can scale up very well. But Excel is the wrong thing to do this in if you're going to start doing lots and lots of queries on it. So what I've done is I've worked it in such a way that instead of recording all of the exact data, we're recording changes day by day. And it's a much smaller table. So what we end up with is the position it was in this day, the next day, the following day. But we also know and I'll explain how we're going to do this in a second. We also know what the domain name was and what the landing page was. And those two bits of information are pretty crucial to the rest of the analysis that we're going to do. So this is kind of laying out how it's building the dashboards. We take all the rankings in advanced web ranking. We're doing exactly what I was just saying there. We're concatenating the landing page and the keyword so that we can then look up the difference between that and historical points of time. We're then summing those changes and using the Optify click-through rate data, which is one of my favorite ones. Does everyone know what I'm talking about by the Optify study that came out about a year ago, maybe? Nobody? Anybody? Fine. Someone tweet a link to it because it's excellent, because that's the model that this uses as well. Um, and then what it does is it takes the perceived traffic from Google AdWords by keyword uses the Optify click-through click -through rate data to give us an idea how much traffic that site is generating from that individual keyword, and then sums up every single site's, key, site's traffic in the data set and gives you a reasonably clear picture as to who's doing best, who's doing worst, and everybody in between, and the different changes that they've got day by day. Um, the other stuff that it does, if I go back a second, the other stuff that we're doing is I've got lots of little add-ons for it that allow you to analyze individual sites from that data set. So when you're looking at, say, the top 50 sites in your niche, 
You can then click on any one of those sites, see all of the keyword data for it, see all of the rankings for it historically, do the rank checking, which I'll speak to yourself about afterwards, reference to Skyscanner. Um, <laughs> and what it also allows us to do is look at the reasons why that site is ranking, either across the whole domain or across individual keywords. Um, it's ugly, by the way. I'm really not very good at graphic design. In fact, I am shit at anything to do with graphic design. I'm famous for producing ugly websites, basically. Um, and I'm also famous for producing ugly Excel sheets. This is about as sexy as this stuff gets, but it's just kind of a very quick demonstration of the kind of stuff that you can output in seconds. Um, so, before we start looking at the kind of learnings we can get, these are all of the different kinds of data that we're keeping at this point. We have every domain that has appeared in any of these searches. We've got every one of the landing URLs, all of the keywords, and the perceived volumes for them in AdWords. We know the changes day by day, so we can see who's doing well, who's improving, who's losing space. We're also taking all of the SEO metrics for each one of the landing pages and each one of the domains through a couple of different APIs, straight in Excel as well. And we're also taking all of the social metrics for both the landing page URLs and for the domains themselves. So it's kind of getting more and more complicated. This started out as something that I said, yeah, I can put this together in half a day. And it's taken about two and a half months. Um, so it then gives us this really ugly table here. But all of this, again, is automatic. Now, in the same way that Richard was showing us um, yesterday morning, the functions that he's built, um, the add-ons that he's got for Excel that allow you to do this. This spreadsheet essentially has all of them in it, and it is using them to pull this data in. Um, the first one, now, this is, a, this is a, a great one, because I'm, I'm sure everyone has had this problem at some point or another. I've got a great big, huge list of URLs. I want to extract just the domain names out of those. It's an absolute freaking nightmare. It genuinely is. What, the way I started doing it was I built a huge array of every one of the top level domains, and I then used that to pattern match it against the URL string and take the stuff that was immediately before it. But that gets buggered up by .co.uk's and trying to pattern match on full stops and things like that. Um, it also loses when you've got a large amount of subdomains. So WordPress.com, for instance, it doesn't really work for that. There's an agency in the UK called iCrossing. Um, I don't really know anything about the agency. They're quite a big one, but I've never worked with them. But they have got a really nice add-in, which is available at that address. And it's got a number of different functions within it. A couple of them are awesome. It allows you to identify what the top-level domain is for any domain from a list. It allows you to pull the actual domain, the subdomain. It's, it's a really good, quick, and easy way of doing it. So that's the URL that has that. Obviously, this will be available for download afterwards. I am using the same tools that Richard was talking about yesterday, Niels Bosma's SEO tools for the middle bits. And after Richard's presentation, I'm actually changing it to be his plugin um, for, the, for the rest of the stuff that comes from Moz. So that's kind of a split of the data that we've got for every single one of the URLs that are in this table. And this is the dashboard that we're building out of it. So we can see on a day-by-day -day basis what the velocity of updates is. Now, this isn't real data. This is, because I didn't want to display it, sorry. Um, this is normalized data with random websites in. But what you see, and I've, what I've done is I've put one big change in there. But the way that this actually works is you see, and you'll see the same, you would have seen the same on Dr. Pete's presentation yesterday. What you see is a little line like that, and it kind of looks like something you would have seen in ER, with little spikes as stuff is changing and going backwards and forwards. But then every now and then, you do see a great big huge spike and what we can do day by day is go in and analyze who won and who lost on the previous day's algo updates. Then the manual bit comes in where you really need to sit and look at those sites and try and work out why. But the difference is, for the last however many years, whenever there's been an update like a panda or a penguin or a mayday or whatever, the first thing that happens is everyone goes into a blind panic. And then, you know, everyone does. It's international sign of, you know, it's just, it's terrible. People start complaining, oh, I've lost all my traffic. You know, why has this happened? You then spend the next two or three weeks looking for other examples of sites that have suffered from the same thing. You then look for the commonality between them. You start analyzing why. And by that point, another update's happened. So you really, you're fighting an uphill battle with that one. If you're tracking this to a large amount, day by day, that's the crucial bit, every day, 
you can find out within 24 hours every site that's been penalized, every site that's gone up, and you can be the first to react to change, which can offer a huge, huge advantage. Now, if you're in-house, there is no reason whatsoever why you shouldn't be looking at, say, 25,000 keywords for your industry and then analyzing it that way. If you're agency side, this stuff is so powerful because you can use it to pitch with as well. Hey, did you know that on March the 9th this year, you lost 25% of your rankings, but your competitor XYZ increased it. This is why, this is how we're gonna help you to do it. This, this can really, really, really help. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> it's, see, I'm not even agency side now, so I shouldn't really care. But I remember when I was, this would have been a really, really easy selling tool. You know, being able to show people stuff like this in all of their rankings historically across the entire industry, that's really powerful stuff. Most of the partners that I go into and chat with don't know this data anyway. They've got no idea. The fact that we can tell this, and you can tell this about your industry and your clients, you know, this is so powerful. Why the hell are we not doing this? I thought it was an awesome idea. Dr. P obviously thought it was an awesome idea as well because we both came up with the same bloody thing and are presenting at the same conference. Um, <laughs> but never mind. Um, we, we found out about three weeks ago when everyone was having, we've got like an email group of speakers, and um, when we saw each other's titles, it was like, oh shit. Here we go, who's up first? He is, damn it. <sighs> so this stuff is really powerful. Um, it's also, now this is where it starts getting ugly, because as I say, I'm really not very good at designing stuff. The, um, the open source version of Open Site Explorer, was it, that um, Richard was talking about yesterday? I thought that was a really nice looking dashboard. The reason I asked you to email it to me is because I was gonna steal it and copy yours entirely and just make mine look just like it. You forgot to email it to me, yeah. And I got drunk, so. It wouldn't have happened anyway. Um, but this is the kind of stuff. So I can just, as a, as a report, I can, the, the query here was TripAdvisor pages that are ranking for London-related content. Bang, two seconds, I've got all of them. I can then use that to look at the different parts of the site that I need to build content out on. For instance, I know that Expedia.co.uk do really, really well at, I don't know, hotels in Liverpool. So I can use their domain and those keywords to work out which pages they're getting all the traffic to, have a look at the content and analyze it, and then you know, do the whole repeat plus one issue of just being slightly better than everyone else. Which isn't something that happens very often to me, by the way. Um, now, the other thing that I'm using in this is a tool called socialcrawlytics.com. Has anybody in the room used it? One, two, you want to? Can you get access to it? I will give you access to it. Um, it's a really cool tool. It's built by someone in the UK who's a great SEO. Um, and really all it does is you give it a URL, it goes in, it spiders very, very quickly every URL on that site, and then it checks for every social metric for every one of the URLs. Now, it's got a nice front end at this point in time, but I was speaking to Yusuf, who is the person that built the tool last night, and I've convinced him to put an API in so that we can use this for this spreadsheet as well. And if anyone wants access to it, I'll explain how in a second, this is the kind of results it gives. Now, what's really interesting here is you've got everyone, I think this was, I think this was Expedia.co.uk, um, might have been Hotels.co.uk, no, it was Expedia. Um, so you can see here all of, the, all of the Facebook likes, the tweets, the digs, all of it, right? This took two or three minutes to generate for a site of that size. It's massively quick. And what's bothered me for a long time is we've always looked at link building and thought about, well, hey, let's just stop putting links into the home page, into category pages, and build links to product pages and stuff that we really want to rank. That kind of thinking hasn't really permeated down, certainly in the black hat world anyway, hasn't really permeated down to social yet. This points that stuff out instantly. So the delta there, the blue line on this graph, is how social shares and mentions look like on large corporate sites on average, large e-commerce sites. They're, kind of, they're really tall at the top and it trails off really quickly and then disappears. Spammy sites look like the red one because they've bought 5,000 tweets or likes or something, they've pointed at the homepage, they've pointed at the category page, and that's it, it collapses. It's a cool tool. If anyone in this room wants access to it and 10,000 free credits to run hundreds of reports, 
That's what they need to do. You need to tweet, hi, at YSecand. You need to include ModCon. I'd appreciate it if you included me as well. I tweeted that earlier, so if anyone's too lazy and can't write that down, I mean, that's not really much price to pay, is it, tweeting that? I tweeted that earlier, so just retweet me. Yusuf will get in touch with you, and he will tell you how to log in, and then you can start using this stuff yourself. I've got four minutes left before I'm going to get kicked off, so I need to move on to kind of the pitch. There's, there's the recap as to everything that we're doing at the moment with this really simple Excel sheet. But what I want, and I've really got an ulterior motive for being here and saying this, what I want to do is release all of this into the wild, make it open source. I'll stick it up on a domain somewhere, something like that. Um, I am absolutely sure, because the longer I work on this, I keep on thinking of other ways that we can use the data and other reports that we can do, other things that are interesting to me. People come to me from other parts of the company and ask me stuff, and I build reports for them out of it. There's going to be so many different things that we can do. If I release this publicly and put it up in something like GitHub where we can edit it as a group, would people in this room be interested in working with it and improving it for the community? Anybody? Excellent. Excellent. The next thing is I would really like to engineer this in such a way where you guys can all check your own stuff in your own industries and everyone can upload all of the data to a big combined data set somewhere so that we can have an open source version of search metrics. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah? Excellent. Right. I will, at some point in the next seven days, Register a domain, I'll think of, a word, think of a name for it. Stick it up there so that you can download all of the assets. I'll put some original data sets in there. If, there's, if anybody wants to have this working with something other than advanced web ranking, I'm sure we could do that as well. Um, I will put everything up onto the web. If you follow me, I'll tweet about it at some point, probably late next week, say where it's up, and we can get this started, and we can build our own index of the web that we can use to look at changes instantly. Thank you very much, everybody. Any questions? Thank you. That was great. Um, we just start off the day with a bang. <laughs> Any questions, anybody? I see Casey's got his hand up. He's not allowed to ask questions. Hello. Hey, thank you for the presentation. Uh, You're welcome. Any. Uh, is there any solution for local results, like yeah. Google Places? Yeah, 100%. So I'm not just doing SEO results. I'm also doing all of PPC on a state-by-state -state basis in the US. Anything that, so it's using advanced web ranking to scrape Google with. I originally started scraping Google directly, but it was a pain in the ass, and whenever anything changed, and it, it just wasn't easy. If you use AWR, it gives you a 1,000 odd different search engine definitions. Is that right? 2,000. 2,000 odds, and so that's like, for instance, Google, PPC, USA, Texas. You know, it goes down to that level of granularity. There is, you can use any of that data in this. So I'm using the UK, Spain, France, all the rest of it for localized versions. Google Places? Yes, yes. Sorry, the guy that wrote the software sat over there, so it's quite easy for me to check while he sat in the room. But yes, it also does Google Places. Any other questions, anybody? What's the catch? <laughs> the catch is you have to follow at Search Martin. You do anyway, right? So you can have access to it. <laughs> um, any other questions? No. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>